Stanford University. The Human Experience. Inside the Humanities at Stanford University. humanexperience.stanford.edu. So it's an exciting evening. There's a lot that's coming together after several weeks of very intensive work. When we talk about Renaissance polyphony, most people think of a kind of gentle wash of sound. Josquin is, is not that. It's very intense. It's very focused, sort of chiseled down, um, but it's extraordinary music. will be performed by, mostly by a group of students who've been working very intensively over the last couple weeks through a series of workshops and rehearsals. They're all excellent musicians, they're all excellent singers, they all read well, and it means that they kind of clued in to key concepts about rhythmic accuracy, for instance, tuning, quick tempi, great intensity, and expression, things like that. It's been a real challenge because the music is so difficult and because Jesse really does demand the best from his singers. But I think that's, while the hardest part of this whole experience is the most rewarding also. Tonight we're singing from a, a lectern that's a replica of a 15th century music lectern housed in the Bargello in Florence. And ours is a little smaller, but it's still a substantial thing. And we have a book that we place on the lectern and sing from and uh, that forces all the singers to gather around quite close. In like a modern choir formation, we'd be spread out over risers and we'd be singing towards each other like that. Which is a good way to achieve the sort of blend that modern choirs are interested in. But with this, we're just packed all together. We're forced to listen very attentively to the other parts. It's a bit weird for a singer, but valuable. The other really exciting thing are the visualizations that my colleague Go Wang is preparing. Typically when you think of computer music, Renaissance vocal music isn't like the first or second thing you usually think of. And uh, here's an opportunity to actually to say, hey, computer music isn't just about what's happening like today with technology or with music. It's really using computers to, to transform the way we can understand and experience music in all tenses past, present, and future. You'll see in real time things, sort of essential features of the music as they're happening. Melody lines, things where, places where all the voices come together in a cadence, a point of arrival, things like that. I think is a way to kind of tune in more to what otherwise could be this sort of amorphous wash of sound. We wanted to kind of see how we can really preserve the life, the kind of the soul of the music, while carefully but also perhaps experimentally provide a different lens through which to experience this music. And even for the scholars in the audience, who in many cases know these pieces practically by heart, there might be chances in seeing these real-time visualizations to capture things about the pieces, to make observations on the fly about the pieces that they may not have ever thought of before. As any other kind of creative endeavor, we've probably thrown away more ideas than we've kept. How it looks today was actually pretty different than how it looked like a month ago a week ago or even like a few days ago continues to evolve. So first I hope the audience will just enjoy the concert, but I hope that they'll notice that there's something different in our sound that has to do with the way we're standing and the way we're engaging with a single book. Um, there's a sort of intensity there and focus that is unusual. When the audience is leaving, I just hope they've heard music that, that, that moved them, that filled them, that engaged their ears and their senses and maybe their minds. Early music is not very often performed anymore, and most people probably never hear it. I hope there are some people at the performance tonight who can really appreciate how beautiful it is.
For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.